All right, guys, and now thinking about the treatment for cervical radiculopathy, again, it's important to be systematic. We think about our lifestyle modifications, activity modifications, the therapies available to us, obviously including formal physical therapy for the neck, um, the uh, medical equipment, potentially bracing, what are our medications, uh, what image-guided therapeutic procedures are available to us, and then importantly as well, is there any additional diagnostic workup that we think may be uh, helpful? And lastly, uh, any uh, pertinent or important uh, counseling. What I specifically mean by that is obviously, in addition to the counseling about, look, this is the diagnosis that we suspect and these are the changes in your activity that we think will be protective and prevent uh, further injury, but in addition, identifying other things that the patient may be doing. Obviously, uh, tobacco use is a very common, uh, unfortunately still a very common thing uh, in patients, in, in chronic pain patients, and we know that that can have a major impact on spine pathology. So just as an example, some of the counseling that we could be thinking about. So um, when we think about that uh, treatment path and, and that stepwise uh, uh, approach and, and thought process to the treatment of the patient, one of the things we keep in mind is that we want to uh, utilize our conservative treatments first, both because that's the appropriate thing medically, but then in addition to get these uh, uh, treatments authorized, we would have to demonstrate at least uh, six weeks of conservative treatment, including but not limited to physical therapy and the subsequent home exercise program, chiropractic, acupuncture, uh, some of these useful uh, treatment modalities that can make a significant positive impact for the patient. But after six weeks of that type of, a minimum of six weeks uh, in the previous six months, because that's what you will have to document uh, to get things authorized, um, after that has not resulted in the improvement that the patient uh, deserves and that we're looking for, that's when we would start to potentially think about um, uh, treatment options, including image-guided therapeutic uh, procedures, which for our specific topic of uh, cervical radiculopathy obviously would include the consideration of cervical epidural steroid injections in the appropriate patient. Um, one last thing I wanted to talk about in terms of uh, uh, treatment options uh, uh, for, the, for this patient is that whenever we're dealing with the potential for neurologic deficits. So obviously with a cervical radiculopathy, we're potentially and likely gonna have some level of either sensory or motor changes, numbness or weakness. Uh, in that setting, it's very um, important for us to make sure that we are truly dealing with a cervical radiculopathy. So making sure the symptoms, the exam, the imaging, uh, and then ultimately the EMG nerve conduction study, electromyography nerve conduction study, uh, they all fit together to confirm our uh, diagnosis. Um, so what an EMG nerve conduction study is and really accomplishes, it's a two-part study where we stimulate the nerves uh, in the first portion, and in the second portion, we take a small probe in the form of an acupuncture-sized needle, placing it into different neurologic levels. And what it tells us is, is there nerve injury? If there is, where exactly is it occurring? And how severe is it? And then, of course, that's going to guide us in terms of our uh, optimal treatment for the patient moving forward. And like I said, importantly, it'll help us identify if there's any other uh, concomitant pathology going on. So as a quick uh, example, because this is fairly common and will come up frequently in practice, if someone comes in with neck and hand pain, um, uh, it's, it's very possible that that's a cervical radiculopathy as we are discussing, you know, but it's also possible that they have, may have cervical facetogenic pain and then carpal tunnel syndrome, or they may have a cervical radiculopathy and carpal tunnel syndrome. So that's where the nerve study can be very useful in terms of making sure we do the best uh, treatment for the patient.